Okay. What we're going to treat um, on Robin today is some little t facial telangiectasias. This is a very common spot, as you can see, especially the ones that are uh, adjacent to the ala, the cheeks as well. And, and uh, I found a very useful uh, device to be uh, the Elman radio frequency um, ablators, if you will. Uh, I use a very, very thin wire that they provide uh, for this. And they have several machines, uh, models, they all do a very nice job of, of doing a radio, radio frequency ablation of these uh, facial telangiectasias. You can tap out some uh, that works especially well on the face, but sometimes you can also do them on some little spider veins that are really refractory um, in other areas such as the legs. Uh, I, I do think even under the eyelids you can be very careful and uh, perform this. Uh, but some patients are also even resistant if you uh, use a YAG laser, uh, they can be very resistant to, to it. And I found uh, this is a totally, uh, relatively painless procedure, and I think it's very effective as well. So I, the settings on the uh, Elman AccuSect um, are using the monopolar current, and I set that a little bit higher in terms of the, the current. Uh, I set it at about a, a level of two to three. When we use the uh, dual, I set it on, on uh, five, again, on, on the uh, monopolar current. That's a combination cut and coag. I've been using this technology for at least 19 years, and, and uh, uh, I think it's a, a nice self-contained unit and also, again, very successful. And people can come in and really have very minimal um, redness uh, afterwards. They can really put some makeup on uh, about an hour later and go about their business. So if you look right here, hopefully you can see these demonstrated these little small very fine telangiectasias and you can see that um, in in terms of treatment I'm, I am compressing it what I do is I barely it's a very sensitive area I barely puncture the skin because that's where these live and you kind of trace them out you doing okay mm -hmm. I use loop magnification a lot of times for these very very small ones and you really essentially are getting inside the little uh, small telangiectasia, little uh, vessel, uh, the capillary, if you will, and it really just coagulates these little endpoints. It can be a little bit sensitive. That's a really sensitive area. We just used uh, topical to, to anesthetize it. it. I think it's pretty tolerable, but we'll ask Robin. And she's not trying to, to hit me or anything yet, so I think that she um, seems to be doing okay with it so far. You can even break, break out and come a little further along the sides. You can see there's a very, very fine wire that I'm using. Very quick and easy, nice use of this technology. Just so you know, uh, Robin's had some uh, filler and neurotoxin uh, today, but it also illustrates that this is a nice little quick add-on procedure um, that you can do in combination with, with other things such as fillers and, and neurotoxins all at the same sitting. It really doesn't add anything to any uh, minor recovery time. Uh, in fact, uh, Robin will be going out later tonight. So we're just going to tap out. You kind of see this, this little bigger spider vein, little telangiectasia there. It does smart a little bit, but they really seem to tolerate it pretty well. You, can you see that? It really has disappeared very nicely. Just a little time and patience there. That's really done very well. And I can tell you, I, I've had these uh, done in a very sensitive area. And especially if you're uh, trying to laser these areas, that's, that's really, really uncomfortable. Robin's being very good. I, I won't lie, it is uncomfortable, uh, certainly, but compared to some other methods of addressing these, I think that the pain is less. And you can see this just a really immediate result with, with almost no erythema, no to minimal, I will have to say, actually. Nice part is you can be just just barely beneath the surface of the skin with this very pointed wire, if you will. All right.
All right. Okay. All right. So important again. We've we've prepped her. She's had some local injected. We put some ice on the area to decrease the swelling. We put some tetracaine in her eyes. And we use a little smaller uh, loop in this case. And again, it's very important to stabilize your hands when you're doing this. I'm going to start out with a setting on the uh, S5 of uh, 25 uh, on the uh, coag uh, and cutting mode. And we'll see if it's too much. I, I can adjust it if necessary. Now open your eyes just a little bit. You don't want the eyelashes to get in the way, and that's where the tetracaine also helps. Eyelid skin very thin. How you doing there? Good. Very good. Again, distraction is a very important part of this procedure, and having your assistant be positioned and helping you. See, it's very. I'm, I'm using Julia to help me stabilize my, my hand, and I'm also using my non-dominant index finger and hand to help distract and open up the area. When you're doing these, you can get a little more of an area, but again, be very, very thin skin. You can use some loop magnification if you wish. Now these we can't necessarily keep them from um, making new ones or forming new ones, but I think that the recovery and the effectiveness uh, using this Elman rate of frequency device is, is um, in my hands, the most effective thing for treating these. Again, I want to keep my, my loop free of debris. Be careful not to go too deep. Hurting you at all, Ju? Mm -hmm. Are your eyes sensitive at all? Mm -hmm. Good. No, I love it. Yeah, you're gonna <laughs> find it's a lot easier to recover from this. You know, a little lasering around the mouth will be. No longer, but you're doing great. I think Julie's very comfortable. I believe she's going to like the recovery period on this a lot more than her laser treatment of these spots eight years ago. Take a look. Good. I think I think um, that we took care of. If you look very nicely, um, besides the numbing, of course, the uh, lidocaine injection. I think that uh, uh, it's very easy to tolerate. And again, after a day or so, she'll be able to put a little bit of uh, light makeup on there. We're just going to put a little bit of uh, antibiotic ointment on there and use it for a, a day, and those will all be epithelialized and they will re epithelialize very quickly. So it's a very, I think, effective um, radiosurgical loop uh, shaves of these uh, areas of the lower eyelid and, 
and uh, uh, obviously I think the, the Julian's going to like it and, and our results going to be very, very nice. Mm -hmm. Thank you. This is Leanne, and, and she comes in with uh, some actually what uh, are, are what we see in our patients a lot, uh, which are just some pigmented and even some non-pigmented nevi, um, and even some little lumps and bumps that that uh, are on her face, and she doesn't want any scars, of course. Um, we have a technology that I've been using for 19 years, essentially, in, in various forms, a, a radio frequency uh, technology where I will remove these with a loop radio frequency device uh, from Elman. Um, and the nice part is, is once these things heal, there's really no scar. Uh, and that's pretty nice. And also to, to do, I think we counted five uh, little lesions on Leanne on her face and neck. It'll take me probably about uh, a minute and a half to two minutes uh, and when we're really doing it. The nice part about this is uh, when they're through, we put a little dot band-aid on for a few hours. They can take that off and put some uh, antibiotic ointment on there. Um, and even in patients that have larger pigmented uh, lesions, if the pigment is at a deeper level, we're still going to, and they, and they remain, have any pigment, because some of that is at the basal layer um, of the uh, dermis. If they have any pigment left, um, it will be totally flat, and it might even be, it'll be smaller than originally. We can also take our IPL laser to remove any remaining pigment if that's what we need to do. But I can promise you in, in uh, using uh, a rate of frequency such as this, um, that, that the uh, scarring is much more minimal and actually uh, almost non-existent when we do this, especially compared to an excision and a, and a suture closure. Uh, much less time effort and it looks, looks better. So it's really a nice, uh, uh, been a great addendum and addition to my practice uh, for uh, the 19 years and, and uh, uh, you'll see that's really quick and easy. Only bad part is putting a little bit of uh, lidocaine in there. That's probably the worst part of the whole thing. So we're going to go ahead and proceed and, and uh, take these uh, little five spots out and as I say, we'll be done very, very quickly. All right, so we've marked these and they've been numbed. Again, uh, the, an area they can be used for uh, AKs, they can be used for seborrheic keratosis very nicely and easily. Just removing these spots. She's got five little spots and I'm going to lean her back just a little bit. All right, the other thing that I think is very helpful is to moisten the area. The radio frequency does uh, work better in a moist environment. The setting on the uh, dual is using uh, 25 on the uh, mixed cut and coag current. We're going to, again, I put a little betadine, I'm wiping it off. And again, you, want it, uh, you need to keep the, the loops uh, pretty clean so you can have a little moist sponge and clean it. So you get a little smoke. We also use a smoke evacuator. Well, you can see we're just down. We go down in the, into the papillary dermis and probably down even into the reticular dermis at times. If it's a seborrheic keratosis, of course, they're more superficial. So we don't need to go quite as deep. That takes it off very, very quickly. You doing okay, Leanne? Perfect. Good. The nice part about the radio frequency device from um, Elman, it generates very, very little char. It actually just gives you enough, but it won't uh, affect the remaining dermis, so you get better healing and therefore less, less scarring. All right, and now we're going to move on. And this is especially good for some small areas, such as, again, the nose. Uh, also good for syringomas or, and even cholesterol deposits of the um, eyelids, sometimes even milia. And see if you can see there's a little, just a little bitty lump that came up a little while ago on her nasal lobule there. We're just going to get rid of it. Is that feeling okay? Mm -hmm. Good.
as I said, the nice part is when you do take these off, and, and uh, Leanne actually had this taken off by another practitioner in the past, um, it's still a little bit elevated, and we're going to get rid of that elevation. Again, if any pigment comes back, then we'll take one of our lasers to it, the IPL laser, and, and remove any remaining pigment if that bothers her. There you go, you can see that is down. And we have one more spot that we're going to do. This is also a very effective uh, treatment for resistant uh, warts. The other thing that you don't get that we see uh, a lot in um, patients that have liquid nitrogen um, cryo removal of some of these lesions is a, a very common uh, to get hypopigmentation. That's a very difficult problem to deal with. You really never see the hypopigmentation um, in patients after this uh, radiosurgical loop shaving. And also in, in uh, Fitzpatrick grade or level five and six skin, African American skin, Asian skin, um, it looks white for a very short time but really repigments very, very nicely because you're leaving the uh, basal layer of the dermis to uh, which still has the uh, the melanin uh, pigment uh, remaining. So they really repigment very, very nicely. So we've essentially done five lesions on Leanne. They're, they're taken care of. You can see she really doesn't have any, uh, I mean, very little bleeding erythema in there. We're going to put some little dot band-aids and a, li a little dab of antibiotic ointment and she'll be able to go about her business. Um, and we'll check up on her in a, in a few weeks and make sure that um, they're all healing and doing what we want to do. Wasn't too bad, I hope. Not at all. Very good. Now, Leanne's had uh, some uh, lesions uh, very similar, similar to this uh, taken off with uh, other methods in the past. So how did this compare to some of these other methods? This was so much better. It did not hurt versus, you know, other doctors that I've gone to to remove moles where they, you know, inject it with a lot of cane as usual, but they take a razor and just razor it off. This was so much, you know, better and, you know, did not hurt or anything and I think they'll have much better results. Uh, very good. We appreciate it.